Okay, so let's begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me today in our second webinar. So my name is Claudia Tunnell. I'm a biomedical engineer at Sensing Future, and I'm responsible for the scientific development and innovation of the PhysioSensing product that I will show you today. Uh, we are specialists in technology for force and pressure platforms with wide applications in physical vestibular levitation, as you will see during this webinar. So let's begin with Mary. Okay, so today I am pleased to present our second webinar. Um, so today we are going to talk a bit about the balance mechanisms and vestibular disorders, and also about the, the vestibular rehabilitation therapy that is done. And then the, we will focus mainly in the virtual reality use in vestibular rehabilitation, and we will finish the webinar with a demonstration of the solution that we have using virtual reality for vestibular rehabilitation. So let's begin with our first topic. So what is balance? Balance is the ability to maintain the body's center of mass over its support. So the center of mass, as you can see in this image, is uh, the mean position of the mass in the object. And here you can see the projection of the, the center of mass in the floor. This is called the center of pressure, representing all the forces that are being act on the plantar surface. And this is what um, is the fundamental um, uh, measure that is used in instrumented platforms like ours, force or, or pressure platforms. And this is the golden measure of these um, platforms. You can see here in this image when the center of mass um, is in the base of support, it will be um, in this zone. And when you fall, your center of pressure will go out of your base of support. And the, then the center of pressure will be out of these um, boundaries. So a balance works. Balance is maintained and achieved by a complex ses set of sensory, sensory motor control uh, systems, including the sensory input, the, the vision, the proprioception, the joint, the muscles, the touch, the vestibular system, and then it, all this is sent to the brain stem, and we have the integration of all these inputs. They are sorted, are sorted out and integrated with the um, learned information contributed by the, um, the cerebellum and the, 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 the cerebral cortex. The cerebellum provides information about automatic movements that we have learned uh, through repeated exposure, exposure to certain motions. For example, uh, a tennis player, he learns how to optimize the, the balance control during that movement by repeating uh, this movement several times. And as sensory integration takes place, the brainstem then transmits impulse to the muscles that control the eye movement and the head and the neck and also our trunk and legs so that you can maintain balance and walk um, without losing your balance. Um, several conditions can um, can uh, disturb balance. Uh, when any of these um, systems are injured, then balance can be markedly affected. Uh, some conditions, for example, are stroke, Parkinson's disease, um, multiple sclerosis, dysfunctions, um, stimulant dysfunctions, knee and foot lesions, among others. Um, but today we'll talk mainly about vestibular dysfunctions. So in our next slide, um, we have here the vestibular system. It has a, a fundamental role in the sensation and proprioception of the body uh, position and movement, as well as eyes movement during head motion. It is composed of three uh, semicircular canals, as you can see here, and two fluid field sacs within the vestibule, located in the inner ear. The fluid shifts with the um, head movements, which stimulates the vestibular hair cells, uh, receptors that send the, the position change to the brain, uh, acting uh, similar to a gra gravity sensor. When the vestibular appar apparatus is damaged by any pathology, several clinical uh, manif manifestations can arise, such as dizziness, vertigo, risk of falling or getting injury, injury, but um, usually they show discomfort, 
um, decreased motor, motor capacity and physiological distress. Um, other symptoms may, might include nausea, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, the change in um, heart rate, blood pressure, among others, which can cause confusion, disorientation, and they can come and go in short periods of time, which can lead to, to fatigue and depression. Uh, several conditions can contribute to vestibular dysfunction. Some of them um, are listed here, the most common uh, diagnosis, like BPPV, uh, migraines, labyrinthes, Meniere's disease, vestibular neuritis, um, traumatic brain, brain injury or concussions, and strokes. And then here, um, we have the, the vestibular rehabilitation therapy. So one of the, the treatments um, that can be used for balance recovery through exercise, use neuroplasticity mechanisms, the compensation, habituation, and adaptation, so as to mitigate uh, or eliminate the patient's symptoms. The main elements of um, vestibular rehabilitation therapy uh, usually are habituation exercises based on repetition of exercises that trigger vertigo until the adaptation is achieved to repetition and habituation. Second, we have the, the um, increase of the vestibular ocular defects gain and gain uh, stabilization based on, um, on visual stimulus, such as opto optokinetic stimulation that I will show you today to increase the adaptive capacity of the vestibular system in order to recover the vestibular ocular dynamic response. Then we have the postural control. Um, here you can use platforms like uh, the physio sensing platform so, so as to um, adequate the motor strategy and integration of the visual, vestibular and somatosensory systems. In this way, you can also identify um, appropriate postural strategies for, strategies for the patient. And the last is number four, improve patient general state. Um, mainly is quality of life, life, so as to return to daily living activities, encourage physical activity and stress control. In here, I have a very good article with the, the key exercises for vestibular rehabilitation therapy, um, which include the general stretching and flexibility exercises, voluntary high movements and fixations, like visual stabilization exercises, Active head movements for cali calibration of the vestibular ocular reflex, active body movements uh, with improvement of the vestibular spinal regulation, substitution exercises for the use of various senses, uh, mainly somatosensory cues and vision. Then we have visual dependency and somatosensory exercises, habituation exercises that we already talked about. And of course, education for using assistive devices and safety or awareness techniques to avoid falls. Also, in this article, they indicate that patients should perform perform exercises for gaze stabilization um, four to five times uh, daily, in a total of 20 to 40 minutes a day, plus um, 20 minutes per day of balance and gait exercises. And all this can be complemented with virtual reality, which um, is what we have here today. So what is virtual reality? It's a system that allows you to have a real-time simulated experience and interaction with the virtual world. The most known um, virtual reality use um, and mounted display, uh, which is called the virtual reality headsets. And they usually have two small um, high resolution OLED or LSD displays in front of the eyes of the patient, running a three-dimensional virtual world with the real-time um, air tracking sensors. In the last decade, uh, virtual reality has become generally accepted as a therapeutic tool for neuro neurological patients, involving real-time st simulation and inter interaction between sensory, uh, motor and cognitive channels, it can also be very immersive um, as it provides um, a real world and a 3D and in a three dimensional. And it also allows the health professional to provide a wide variety of stimuli um, with a greater spe specificity compared to the tradi traditional vestibular rehabilitation methods. 
Um, in this way, they can present uh, the patient with uh, sensory conflicts at different levels of difficulty within a safe, comfortable and standard, standardized environment. In addition, virtual reality allows rap rapid repetition for habituation exercises and environment uh, manipulation in ways that disrupt or perturb the balance of the patient, forcing to acquire balance recovery strategies while avoiding any threat to the patient. Thus, I have here some, uh, some studies combining uh, vestibular, vestibular rehabilitation with virtual reality. Uh, back in 2002, Dr. Veer did a study, a study where they presented a panoramic image in the head-mounted head mounted display to 50 people with uh, chronic uh, diseases, in which nine subjects were given a protocol with su successive increases in magnification of 3 to 5% every five minutes over a total of 30, minute, 30 minutes, uh, with two sessions per day. They measured the, var the vestibular alcohol reflex gains after the treatment, and uh, they did the, the dizziness handicap inventory, and after the five days, the gains in subjects that will use the treatment um, increased when compared with the control subjects, and also shown reduction in um, symptoms of vertigo. Another interesting um, study conducted by Garcia with the 44 patients diagnosed with the unilateral or bilateral Meniere's disease, in, in which several uh, rehabilitation exercises um, were performed at the clinic twice a week with each patient uh, in the total of 12 sessions. Each session was 45 minutes and the patients were exposed to foveal exercises like foot pursuit, saccades, uh, retinal uh, exercises uh, like the tunnel, uh, optokinetic bars, and sensory integ integration stimulus like uh, vestibular ocular reflex exercises and vestibular ocular reflex suppression. Um, they, are, they also train exercises on postural control and limits of stability, and uh, the stimulus were adapted, um, the stimulus difficulty was adapted to the patient and uh, response. After treatment, the case group uh, subject improved from dizziness and uh, reported better quality of life after the inter intervention as had uh, reduced scores in the dizziness analog scale and the difference over um, 18 points in the um, dizziness handicap uh, inventory scores. More recently, uh, Michaeli uh, showed that the, this combination is e effective among 47 patients with unil unilateral uh, EPO function um, they were in the clinic seen twice a week for four weeks during 30 to 45 minutes. And also between the, the supervised sessions, the patient did a twice daily home exercise program for a total of 30 to 40 minutes a day with adaptation, substitution, habituation and balance exercises. And also for the Ed Mountain display group, they displayed an immersive game where uh, it was shown a car and they needed to steer the car with that tilting. After the four weeks, a significant uh, maximization effect of ipsi lesional uh, vestibular ocular reflex improvement was found in this group when compared with the, 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 the control group, as well as in the, the DHI scores and the, in the ABC scores. Also, they, they also calculated the, um, the simulator sickness questionnaire, which was used to record the, the, um, the severity of 16 different symptoms across three subscales, nausea, oculomotor stress and uh, disorientation, as uh, the virtual reality can cause some uh, severe sickness. And they found that um, in, the, in the, their analysis, that uh, the SS key scores demonstrated a um, significant reduction of symptoms, symptoms related to nausea, oculomotor stress and the disorientation when compared to the first week versus the second and so on until the fourth uh, week scores, suggesting that the patients were safely habituating to the virtual reality stimuli. 
Moreover, it is important to note that after one year, they publish another article um, in which the patients with the head mounted device group show higher vestibular hocal reflex gain values um, within one year follow up. And also, they found significant uh, reductions in uh, the DH high uh, score and subscales in this group. Another interesting finding in this study is that they found significant improvement in static posterography scores using a force plate, also in the head mounted device group alone. So this gives us a look of, of how one virtual reality game can help in vestibular limitation. And given all this, um, here at Sensing Future, we combine the, the physio sensing product that we have, the, the force plate or the pressure plate, with virtual reality. And this is where we, we enter to our product, the Libra Virtual Reality Clinical Software. This system is composed by a force or pressure platform. I have here an example of the force platform. I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, <laughs> but this is how the force plate looks. And uh, it also needs a virtual reality headset. We usually recommend the, the, the goggles from Hoku's Quest or HTC Vive. Um, I have here with me the, the Oculus uh, Cosmos series. As you can see here, it also works with our solution. And uh, it also uh, comes with a software for um, uh, Windows system operation. And uh, this solution can uh, allow functional assessment and vestibular rehabilitation treatment using a very immersive virtual reality system. So the exercises that we have, they are designed uh, to enhance gaze stability, increase postural stability, improve vertigo and daily activities, as well through several fully customized stimulus that I will show you, like saccadic, autokinetic bars, smooth pursuit, the supermarket effect, among others, which we will see um, in our next topic. Um, this system also provides a consi consistent input and precisely monitor patient response using the virtual reality headset movements and the force platform data uh, through the center of pressure data that we can get. Um, this allows you also to um, patient progress tracking throughout the limitation sessions. Um, these solutions can also help you increase the effectiveness of the vestibular treatment using a, mot a continuous motivating and encouraging patients that um, undergo therapy. Um, nevertheless, I would like to point out some uh, contraindications contra uh, that we have been asked. So it should not be used with a patient when they have um, an acute, acute attack of Meniere's disease or when the patient has a significant level of disability or cognitive impairment, um, or when the, they, they found a constant intolerance after two weeks of treatment. Um, regarding clinical validation, uh, this software, uh, this, this solution was um, validated in a clinic in uh, Uruguay in 2019, and it was used for uh, about one year uh, in over 120 patients, and uh, they use it mainly in three uh, population groups. Uh, dizziness uh, after the BPPV maneuver, unilateral vestibular hypofunction, and elderly. As you can see here, we have here the um, dizziness handicap uh, um, values, um, it, dizziness handicap inventory uh, scores before the treatment and after the rehabilitation treatment with the system. You can see that uh, all groups improve, um, having about uh, 20 to 20 points of improvement in the, the, the DH high uh, score. Uh, in this case, the first two group did um, in average nine sessions, um, in which 5.5 in average, uh, the system, uh, the Libra uh, VR clinic system was used. For the last uh, group, for elders, it was using um, 11 sessions and also in an average of 5.5 sessions, um, showing that this, this um, solution can be 
a great tool to help clinicians in the vestibular rehabilitation therapy, which is, I would like to go to our next point of the webinar. So now I'm going to add here some videos and to show you the solution. Let me just put video. Okay, I hope everyone can see it. So this is uh, the software, how it looks. Let me just come back here. So here you can see the, the, the patient list. Um, and then you just select the patient to start a new session. And here you can see the previous sessions that the patient already has. And you can create a new session. We have three types of sessions. We can create a rehabilitation session based on the selected session. We can create a, a blank new session for rehabilitation or a blank new session for assessment. In this case, I'm going to start with the assessment. And also here you can select for the assessment uh, different tests. Now uh, we are going to start with the posterography exam. This posterography has this list of um, exercises that you see. However, you can create your own protocol with different stimulus and different um, durations as you want. So in the posterography, it starts with limits of stability. Here you can see in real time the center of pressure uh, of the patient. And the, the idea here is to, to see the, um, the displacement of the, the, the center of pressure over the patient base of support. And then we go to the next exercises uh, that we have. The, the next one is eyes open in a firm surface for 30 seconds, then eyes close. And then we have the saccadic. Here it will show in the virtual reality headset the image that we see here. You can see the object with some letters and some numbers that will appear in the, in the headset. And you can see at the same time in the computer screen. During the, this, um, the patient should recite the, the letter or number that is seen so that you know they are looking at the object. Then we move on to the optic optokinetic bars. We have four directions. We start with um, right to left. And you can see that the, the visual stimuli is moving according to the head movement to be more immersive. And then we repeat for the other directions. And the last one is eyes closed with foam. Again, with 30 seconds. In the end, you can create a report file with the results. The report is very simple to read. It uh, comes with two parameters, the center of pressure ellipse area and the sway velocity. The ellipse area contains 95% of the center of pressure data. And this can be a very good tool for you to see how much the, the patient adds sway with the different conditions. In this way, it can help you understand how you can um, uh, do a personalized treatment for the patient according to the results if they have more problems with eyes open, eyes closed, or with the stimulus, or in the case of the eyes closed with foam. And here, in the statokinesiograms that you have here, you can see the center of pressure. You can see here the, the limits of stability uh, that you, we did in the beginning. And this you can use to compare with all the other conditions and see how much it is um, above the limits of stability area. Here you can see the center of pressure, um, the, the center of pressure ellipse area, and also the, the values of the, the cup data. Also, you can create um, a report, a progress report. If you have more than one session, for, ex if, for example, if you do the treatment and then you do a follow-up evaluation, you can see how much the patient has improved for each each condition. And like I've told you, we can you can create your own protocol with different stimulus, with different durations. You can change the difficulty by having a background. You can change the activity, you can be seated or you can be in tandem position. You can use a form. You can it is very, very um, customizable. 
and then you just write the name for the protocol that you want. Then we have the, the second assessment that we have is the subjective visual vertical. This is the assessment of the patient perception of verticality. So it mainly represents the function of the utricle in acute uh, stage. During these, um, these assessments, subjects are asked to align the, or align the, to their perceived vertical with the static or dynamic background. In this case, in this example, I don't have a background, but you can have the backgrounds with some dots rotating. And in this case, the patient will need to use the controller that will you have with the virtual reality. So you need to use the joystick to move the arrow, and then you use the, the button in the back to move to the next repetition. In this case, it has 10 repetitions, but you can create a different protocol with less um, repetitions or more. Okay, you can see here, so the image of the patient is not moving, but he is clicking on the arrow, on the joystick, sorry and then going to the next repetition. And in the end, it will give you the score of um, the degree that the patient did compare with um, the, the vertical line. So you just click report, and you have there the, the result for the 10 repetitions, the average. And then we have the uh, here, also, if you want to know more about this protocol, you can check this uh, article here, the subjective visual vertical in virtual reality validation and normative data. It can be a very good uh, tool if you already have our system. Then the next assessment model that we have is the tilt response. Uh, this test explores the perception of the gravi gravitational vertical and the capacity of the subject to estimate it in the dynamic approach. In the tilt response, patients are present with a line, as you can see there in the image, um, and they are instructed to adjust the roll angle. So they need to tilt their head until the line is, is perceived as a line with the gravi gravitational vertical. This line is present for a certain amount of time, and the subject will adjust the head until the line is perceived as vertical, and after the elapsed time, a new line will, with a, will appear with a different inclination, and then it will go on until the end of the, the protocol. Um, in this case that I have here, it's uh, five uh, trials with eight seconds for each, um, for each trial. And you can see here the angles for each condition, 25, 10, minus 25, minus 15, and 50. And in the end, it will allow you to calculate several parameters that I will show you. So this is an example. So the patient needs to tilt the head to see the, the line in the vertical. And then in the end, you can create a report with several parameters. Sorry. So these are all the parameters that you can get with this protocol. You can get to the delay time that the patient took, the rise time, the, the settling time, and the steady state error, the overshoot value, and the integral time square absolute error. If you want to know more about these parameters, you can have a look at this article, the complementary test to the subjective uh, visual vertical. And uh, this is the end of the assessment model. For the gravitation, we have here another video. Okay, so you can um, select the exercises that you want to use for this session. In this case, I'm selecting all of them just to show you. So you can choose um, uh, several scenarios, as you can see here, and they are very immersive, as you can see uh, here. My colleague is moving their his head. Um, and you can see the environment with the 360 degrees, and the, the visual stimuli is moving according to his movement of the air. Here we have the supermarket. Here we have the space. In this case, you can also adjust the space velocity, so it will rotate around the patient's head. 
then we have the smooth pursuit. In this case, as you can see here, you can select a lot of parameters, the duration, the head rate. So if you want to hear a sound and the patient needs to do a movement with their head, you can adjust the head rate. The velocity, the movement, it can be horizontal, vertical, random. Uh, you can change the shapes of the object. We can change the icon rate to be more fast to change. And you can put an environment, any of the environments that I show you in the beginning and uh, among others, as a background to, to see how the patient uh, reacts with um, different environments. Like I've told you, the patient should recite the number so that you, you know that they are looking at it. Then here we have the, the tunnel. In the tunnel, you can adjust to the, the velocity and also the direction if you went forward or backwards, and also the type of movement if you went current or not. And we have three locations that you can use. You can use a, um, a stone tunnel, a supermarket, and also a road. This is a very good exercise to induce visual parallax. Here then you have the vestibular ocular reflex exercise. Again, here you can change a lot of parameters and you have the option to adjust the gain. Here you can adjust the gain up to, to, to two. And again, you can put a head rate for the patient to do the movement and here a beep. In this case, um, in this video, he was doing the horizontal, but you can ask the patient to do the vertical VO hair. And we also have the VO hair suppression in another exercise, if you want to do the, the VO hair suppression exercise. Then here we have the versions. In this case, the object will start far away from the, the field of view and comes closer. In this case, you can adjust the step movement if you want it to be smoother, like you see in this video. Or with steps. We also have the, the fixation exercise that is not in this video, but in the fixation exercise, it will appear the object and then it will disappear for a few seconds and you can adjust the, the time that you want to stay the object and disappear. Then here we have the saccadic. This is the same that I've shown you in the posterography. Then we have the autokinetic bars. Here you can instruct the patient to look ahead or to turn their head and you can put the environment in the background. And then here we have some games that you can use. We have the seek and find. In this case, they need to use the uh, movement to locate the software logo. We have 20 levels. The first levels, they are very easy. The logo is very big, but then it will come uh, smaller and the uh, as we increase the difficulty to have more people around the patient in the supermarket, you will be moving like you see here in this video. And in the end, you can create a session report. You can see here the parameters that you selected and you can see the head movement distribution. You can see the horizontal and the, the vertical movement for each exercise. And like I've told you, you have the option to save this session as a protocol, as a rehabilitation protocol, if you want to repeat it in the future. Then you can load this protocol if you want, or you can use a session that the patient already did in the, the, in the past, and then you can adjust the exercises or the parameters to make it more difficult. And you also have the option to create a protocol like in posterography. And here you just select the exercises that you want and the parameters, and then you just save it and give a name to the protocol. Then our last video is uh, the rehabilitation model, but for balance and postural training with the, the, the force platform or the pressure platform. Right now, the software has three games that you can use. Here you can see the car smash um, game. This is a very good um, game for limits of stability training, for load transfer, and, and you can see that uh, it gives you um, visual biofeedback during the exercise. And uh, 
you can it also needs motor control training because in the first levels it's very easy but then you need to stay a few seconds over the cars to smash it then we have the coin collector it's a bit different uh, the patient is moving the floor with the center of pressure uh, by inclining and the, he needs to catch the coins and in this case is very fine movements around the, the quite stance position and the last one is the maze master in this case the patient is an astronaut and he needs to catch all the the stars the first level it's very small but then um, we have other levels with more pads, making making also a cognitive challenge for the patient. And so this is all the the exercises and games that are available in our solution. So this is the end of our demonstration. Thank you again for uh, joining me today. And before you leave, um, we are open to questions. You can send me a, an email to Claudia Tonella Robes in the future. Dot pt. Um, if you want, I, uh, I can do a demonstration of the, the software with, um, with the, the goggles and the, the, the platform. We can also send you a quotation. You can, we also have training programs, among others, that you can see here. Uh, you can also take a look at our blog in our website page with several articles, which can be of your interest. And if you want a quotation, please go to our website request pricing page. And uh, we ship worldwide, so right now we have distributors in 50 countries um, with local support. And before I finish my presentation, I'd like to tell you our next webinar uh, will be in the 1st of July about fall risk assessment. So stay tuned to, more, to know more about it. And uh, thank you again for watching this webinar. Have a great weekend. Bye.